Happy WNBA Draft Day, everybody. Welcome to All Elite with Keeks, another episode on this Monday. Um, welcome, welcome, all Jackins. This is our type of show. If you are jack off a Jackin, this show is for you today. Welcome, welcome. Um, I was looking at the WNBA Draft. It is a beautiful day for women's sports. Um, it's an evolution. Um, we're witnessing in real time. Uh, WNBA is evolving. And um, it's a good sign for women in sports. Um, it has a different feel to it. You know, you can feel the energy. You can feel this will be different. Like, it's the start of something different. And I'm proud as a woman to see evolvement, um, especially in women's sports. Uh, WNBA, the season starts next month. Um, I am a Chicago Sky fan now, uh, so shout out to Chicago Sky. Um, it's been good draft picks. LA Sparks got some good draft picks. Like all the ladies, the the whole draft of the 2024, it gave me the vibe of the NBA 2003 draft. So, is that? Hey, Andy, is definitely something different. I am again ecstatic as a woman to see evolvement um viewership um it was packed it was sold out at this draft you saw a lot of people there um you know people you know caitlin had her prada on you know people had that they they look good everybody looks amazing they look good um the different teams was doing watch parties they was watching and stuff like that so we're off to a good start so it just makes me motivated and i hope you know with American women's wrestling that it involves as well. And it, you know, we got some things to do. It's still a lot of work to do in American women's wrestling. And no matter what program, it's still a lot of work to do. So I hope this motivates like the promoters to see that women, we are marketable. Just let them do them and just promote them. And, you know, the it's limitless, you know, uh, and I feel like Tony, Tony, Tony Khan just, I know every time we have women pay-per-views, it always fail, but I feel like, you know, if we keep trying, it won't fail. Tony Khan, just, just give it another shot. Uh, just give it a shot at doing a women's pay-per-view at AEW and see how that turns out. But we off to a good start. Um, so for today's show, um, now I won't be doing my usual that I usually do, uh, reviewing Dynamite, reviewing Collision, Rampage. Um, I'm going to be re reviewing certain things that I wanted to highlight from this week. And then also, um, we're going to get into some Jack Perry things. What is this dog? This dog done got in here, y'all. But um, that's what we're going to do uh, today. So if you were jacking, make sure you tune in, tap in. I know you guys watching Raw right now and the draft is still going on right now. It's a lot of things going on right now. But it's plenty, plenty of time. Um, I'm pretty certain y'all will get into the good part, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and get it started. Um, first things first, I want to highlight some things that happened on uh, Dynamite that I wanted to get off my chest and I wanted to talk about. Let's start off with um, Edge versus Penta. I wanted to talk about Edge versus Penta. Um, Adam Copeland, I'm sorry, I called him Edge. Adam Copeland. Let me take a drink on this one. Adam Copeland should not be wrestling for 20 minutes on TV. No shade to him. But a 20-minute Adam Copeland match should not be happening on regular TV. Um, what I saw on Dynamite with Ed, well, no, I keep calling him Edge, Adam Copeland, I'm sorry, and Penta. Uh, Penta was very, he had to slow down a lot. And I hate when Penta has to slow down because we know Penta can really go. We know, you know, we know what he um, can contribute to the ring. It was a fun match, but overall, I just feel like it's not necessary for Adam Copeland to have a 20-minute match. Now, if he's having these Coke opens, that's fine, but a 20-minute 
Cope open is not necessary at all. It's really not. Um, it just made it. It just I don't want to say it made Penta look bad, but it just gave it a, like it picked up towards the end. But at the same time, it's just like, yeah, okay. And shout out to Penta Gear. He had a beautiful blue gear. I did love his gear. Um, I enjoyed his gear. But other than that, it shouldn't be. I'm sorry, y'all. What's going on? Okay, well, tell her to get it. Tell her to get it. Tell her to get him. Uh, Hazel, I. Yeah, no. Don't get it. Sorry. Right. Go get your auntie. Tell her to get it. Lord. Keep the music playing real quick. Let me tell my sister and her dog. Just, uh, wait, look. Y'all, I'm sorry. We had a little dog and he, she just, you know, so we had to get that take care. I'm sorry, y'all, my bad. But, um, where was I at? Yeah. Is the, sorry, y'all, like, y'all didn't want to hear me fussing at the dog, okay? She got out and she was just all over the place, but yeah, everybody's tuning in. Welcome, y'all are tuning in. But yeah, as I was saying, if you just not tuning in, I was just saying there's no reason for Adam Copeland to have a 20-minute match on TV. Okay, I don't want to see Adam Copeland wrestle. Uh, I know, you know, he, he's, I guess he's trying to show that he can keep up with the newer talent. He can keep up with different styles. But it's evident that you cannot keep up with Lucha Libre. That's that's what I saw. Lucha Libre was too much for you. Like he almost died. We like Pensa chopped him, and we saw Adam Copeland almost got short winded. Okay, so obviously Lucha Libre is not for you. And I know you face Rey Mysterio, but that's WWE Rey Mysterio. That's not. Triple A Rey Mysterio, okay? You face Penta, okay? And I hate when Penta has to slow down for somebody. So that's just my only gripe. Uh, Adam Copeland, just keep the match a good, I say a good 10 minutes, good 10 to 12 minutes. That's all. Like, you don't need to be doing 20-minute match to prove to us that you are able to like I appreciate the effort but you beating them anyway so what you're not really putting nobody over so I don't I don't get the point but you don't need to be wrestling 20 minutes because then if you keep doing it then that's when AEW fans are going to start getting irritated that's one thing about AW fans. We'll start getting a little bit irritated to things we're starting to see right through. I'm starting to see right through you, okay? So no more 20-minute matches from Adam Copeland. Um, but I do enjoy it that he is doing the Cope Oakland. He's, a, you know, allowing people to face him, challenge him or whatever. But it doesn't need to be 20 minutes. So has Copeland faced many luchadors and stuff. No, like legitimately, Ray Mysterio is most Ray Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero is probably the only two, but that was WWE, Ray Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero. Pizza had to damn near slow down. He had to slow down and he also, you know, it was just certain things that he couldn't do. You know, he had to make sure Adam Copeland was safe, he was safe. Um I saw the slowest hair Karana I ever seen in my life. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it was just really, really slow tempo. Alberto Sanker. Stop 
name in WWE luchadors because it's not going to count. They got to wrestle like they got to. WWE don't let them do them. So that shit don't count. It don't count at all. They got them doing Americanized lucha. Okay. Not where they from. So that shit do not count at all. They, they, they have to adjust to them rather than them adjust to the luchadors. That's how they have them wrestling. So just don't, don't count these, don't count them. Okay. That, Cause the Sin Cara now, that's the C, the CMLL Sin Cara or AKA, he wouldn't be able to keep up with him now, especially if he was in AEW. So Tony Khan doesn't deal with Conan. Uh, Conan is not in CMLL. Yeah, it's way different. Yeah, Eddie, that's he doesn't deal with Conan. He has the partnership with CMLL now. It's just that he's his wrestlers. Some well, it's only two now that is uh, at Triple A, but they are free to do that. They don't have to. They, he doesn't have. They can't work with Triple A. Uh, or nothing like that. It's just they don't have the same partnership as they once was, but it doesn't stop if they're booked there. Um, because there's certain wrestlers that are still able to be booked at AAA, but as far as the partnership, it's with CMLL because uh, CMLL and New Japan have the partnership together too. So uh, they have that. So, but yeah, Ed, Adam Copeland, 20 minutes, it does not need to happen regularly on TV. Like, I, just if he's gonna have these matches, at least no, no more than twelve minutes, ten to twelve. That's it, okay? Because he almost died. I almost seen him die, okay? Um, moving on. Um, now everybody was distracted by the main topic, and I haven't seen anybody specifically talk about what happened towards the end. Um towards the end of uh, Dynamite. Uh, I want to talk about Swerve. Now, it's Swerve's time, and I feel like at Dynasty, Swerve is going to get that championship. Um, he will be the new AEW world champion, um, which will lead into the Swerve era. era. I say area, era. Um. And I'm actually here for it. Um, I'm excited to see it and see where it goes and see where it heads. Um, the belt looks great on him, as you can see. It fits him. It looks good on him. He is a star. His merch is a selling. Regardless of how you feel about him, regardless of, you know, whatever he said, even though I was disappointed in it and whatever like that, he's a great wrestler. He is a star, and he has the full package. You cannot deny that. Um and I'm interested to see where it leads because I, I feel like they are going to push the, you know, push that momentum on him uh, come Sunday this week on a uh, dynasty. Um, but, you know, everybody was distracted by, by that other situation. You know, it took um, light of a possible that we will have a new champion, which will be Swerve Strickland. Uh, so I feel like they're going to push that button on Swerve. They've been uh, hinting at it. He's been doing a lot of press. He has been doing a lot of interviews. Tony is 100% behind him. Um, so I do see um, Samoa Joe losing on Sunday. And uh, Swerve is going to be our new champion, making history. Um, you know, regardless of the controversy, of you know his statements and things like that you can feel how you feel but the proof is in the pudding now i could see if he was like a scrub in the ring but this man is a great wrestler he's phenomenal and uh he has the full package has for our first appearance been uh be on breakfast club if they can um yeah that's well whatever you know um he has the look he has the image he's gotten bigger he's been in the booth he he can do strong like he's a great adaptable wrestler so he he has everything uh crowd is behind him he's over his merch sales is always in the top five on the aw website um people who say the who's house chant and yeah 
So you might as well push that button because I feel like because what AEW fans really want is, um, of course, the Swerve and Osprey match at All In. When y'all feel like that will happen, so that will lead to that. So uh, I wanted to highlight that. So regardless of how you personally feel about Swerve, I know a lot of people do not like him due to the controversy, or you know, people have they that you know they group think with their friends or whatever, but. He has the full package, whether you hate him or not. He has the full package. He's a great wrestler. He has the look. He can talk. Um, and the belt looks good on him. I mean, look at the picture. Look at this picture. It looks great on him. Sorry, the proof is in the pudding. Somebody might get mad. I mean, you might get mad at me for saying it, but hey. It's right there in your face. Top rope, catch a vibe. <laughs> yeah, so that's that. And then um, I also want to talk about uh, the AEW Women's Division is evolving. Um, it's several stories that's happening, several things that happened this week uh, for the Women's Division. You have uh, Tony Storm, Mariah May. They have getting really closer. It's, uh, you know, it's a little his thing and it's very intimate going on. Anna J, she, Anna J has been booked and busy. Like she was on Dynamite, Collision, ROH, Rampage. Like she has been busy and she has been improving. And she's also been aside with uh, some stardom wrestlers. Um, so that is a good look for her. I'm very, very proud of Anna J. And then Thunder Rosa, she cut a promo because we know Thunder Rosa is facing Tony Storm at Dynasty. And she cut a great promo. She's very fierce. She said, you know, she wiped the paint off of her face and all of that. So you have that, Deanna Perrazzo making her appearance as well. Um, you know, she don't count her out. Uh, we saw... Athena was on te television. She was at the Battle of the Belts. Uh, she went against Red Velvet. And then we saw Red Velvet and Queen Amunata because Queen Amunata came for the save when uh, Athena and also Billy Starks had jumped her after the match. So um, if you didn't catch Battle of the Belts, they um, the ladies did main event. It was um, Athena versus Red Velvet. And that was a good match. I do recommend uh, everybody to watch that. And then Queen Amunata came out with the say, so I don't know. Maybe they are going to do their big one with Queen Amunata and Athena. So that looks like a rivalry that is uh, coming up because uh, Queen Amunata is not over what Billy Starks did to win the uh, women's ROH women's uh, television title. So um, AEW Women's Division is looking the best that I have seen ever. And it's a lot of storylines happening and a lot of women are evolving and finding themselves. Uh, you have Willow Nightingale uh, versus um, Julia Hartz for the TBS Women's Championship. And uh, but uh, Mercedes Monet as well uh, during uh, Dynamite, uh, she had an interview, but she was attacked. The lights went off and she was attacked and nobody knows who attacked her. Um, I feel like it may have been Willow Nightingale, but then I also saw when Chris Salander was outside of her dressing room. So who knows? Like it, it's a lot of things happening in the AW women's business that I am enjoying. Um, they have been doing a phenomenal job, a uh, phenomenal job and a great job. And um, it's elevating. It's at the best um, that it's ever been ever. And like I said, just, you know, just keep a lookout uh, for the women's division because it's a lot of things going. Um, and Mercedes let it known that whoever wins out of Julia and Willow, she's facing them at double or nothing. Um, now, it's um, the now Dave Meltzer said that she's not uh, all the way clear yet, that's why she hasn't been wrestling. Um, but that's a little bit unfortunate, but I guess I get it because she has that CEO gimmick, so it fits the gimmick that she she does what she wants. And Serena Deeb is looking for you know some heat too, so. Don't um uh, count her out as well for because she wants that um you know the women's championship too. So don't count Serena Deep, the woman of a thousand holds out. Okay, so we got that. And then um 
The last part that I want to get to before I get into the main topic for today, um, this Friday, of course, there was the New Japan Strong uh, event, the pay-per-view, um, Windy City Riot in Chicago. It was a great uh, pay-per-view, New Japan. Um, it was the my AEW stars that was booked um, for the uh, event. Uh, Moxley, 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 the ace of professional wrestling. He is the new IWGP champion. Um, it's, it was a few mixed feelings on it, but I see because, you know, New Japan is in a, a I don't want to say a bad spot right now, but they are in a rough spot as far as that promotion. And um, we know that John Moxley will be a transitional champion for them. It's just to help them get back on their feet um, to build up these younger stars so they could be back to what they what they once were. Being that uh, the the yen out there is is you know they missing the yen or whatever the money issues. Um, they their top stars have left uh, and stuff like that and. Listening to um, these, you know, the Joshi uh, International podcast, like Lyric, uh, she said on her show that um, the lack of them building new stars got them to this position that they are now. That it's like a, a chicken with a head cut off right now. They don't know what to do um, because of the bad booking, because they haven't um, they've been relying so much on their veterans and not be and not elevating um the younger stars when it's time to elevate the younger stars <clears throat> so what better way and what better person to help um get that afloat than john moxley he has done it for AEW when AEW had their rough spots or you know getting over you know from the backstage brawl and stuff like that and um you know tony had to rely on john moxley to kind of get the spirit of AEW back to his position. So what better person to help do it uh, for New Japan than Moxley? And then Moxley is already dedicated. He said he's going to be dedicated to New Japan booking, so it won't be none of that. Um, I have the champion, but I'm going to do everything in America. He's willing to do it in uh, Japan and help, you know, help them get afloat and things like that. But Moxley is, like I said, he is the ace of professional wrestling. Moxley cares about professional wrestling. Um, he said it so many times. He cares about the future and things like that. We, you know, he's always been my favorite out of the Shield, and the Shield has always been my favorite faction. There, the reason why I started back watching wrestling. But um, yeah, he is the Kendrick Lamar of the Shield, whether you like it or not. So. Yeah, give it up to Moxley. Um, now it looks like Forbidden Door 3 will be saved because it was looking a little shaky at first. Like, what they going to do? I don't know what they going to do. But um, it's off to um, a great start now. So um, he's already being booked and, and it's already a story going. I have to start checking out New Japan because I, I don't watch all the time. I watch occasionally. I'm a, I guess you could say I'm a casual New Japan fan. But I do keep up from the Twitter, uh, my uh, feed, because my feed is mostly AEW and uh, Joshi fans now. Um, and I have a few WWE fans, but it's mostly covered AEW fans. And most of them, uh, they watch Joshi wrestling. So I usually keep up by looking at their their timeline. I'm like, oh, OK, that's what's going on. That's what's going on. Oh, OK, OK. winning over NATO. See, see, I don't see, I don't be knowing. I don't want to get on here and say none false. You know, I do not be knowing. So it, it, I don't know if it was a good thing or a bad thing. I do know who NATO is though. I I can say that. I, I'm not going to spew nothing that don't make no sense. So I, I will tune into Lyric and see, or I'll just ask her like, was it a head scratcher that he won against NATO? What is it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't think <laughs> I mean yeah so Forbidden Door Forbidden Door 3 should be interesting it is in uh, Long Island they had to move it they did have to move locations somebody didn't have the other half of the money uh, for uh, Arthur Ashe Stadium so <laughs> so 
Tony Khan was like, I got my half. Do you got your half? And New Japan was just like, we had to pay. <laughs> so the cut said, oh, I had a, I got my half of the money. Tiny Hashi was like, oh, about that. We ain't got it. He said, we ain't got it, bro. I ain't got it. I ain't got the five. I ain't got the five, bro. So they moved it to Long Island. So it would still be in New York, but it would still be in Long Island. How does TK convince all these companies? Um, Eddie James, you ask a lot of questions. I appreciate it, though. That's something you have to ask him. But um, there, he's not trying to messed over the partnership and that's that gains trust like um i'll use an example for like when willow nightingale when she won the new japan strong women's championship even though she wasn't supposed to win but she won anyway but she understood that she was just a transitional for it until they figured out what they was going to do instead of saying well no she's going to be champion until He's not like that. So he gains their trust by fulfilling his deal on his end. And then he also, um, thank you. Yeah, he's not trying to invade anybody's property, unlike some people. It's a it's the actual partnership. It's not no, we're gonna be partners, but you're gonna do what I say. It's none of that. And that's how that's how it's supposed to be. That's what it used to be, uh, especially during the territory days. Now you have sometimes it was some people that was politicking and stuff like that, but that's how it used to be. If you did a partnership, y'all, you know, you your 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 guy will win this time. My guy will win this time. It used to be that. Yeah, so that's how he's able to do that. Like, um, and not only that, Rocky Romero is now the new VP of uh, New Japan Talent Relations, and of course, he's also in um, the uh, um, part of CMLL as well. So he so he has Rocky Romero. Rocky Romero does a great job. Rocky Romero is the Forbidden Door. Yeah, it's it's all about respect. Like you gotta remember, Tony Khan is a wrestling fan. He was a wrestling fan first before he became this. He you can say that he's a wrestling mark, but sometimes marks are you know they respect the business. They respect um, the the tradition of the business. So he understands that. Um, now I can say around 2019. No, actually it was 2020 when. Mickey Jane was doing um, that NWA pay-per-view, the women's pay-per-view. Y'all remember that? Now, the New Japan partnership, I mean, not the New Japan, but the NWA partnership, that ended because they was kind of taking advantage of Tony Khan's funds. Like, um, the women's pay-per-view, it was a good pay-per-view. The issue was, the deal was, each person that um, had their wrestler perform, yeah, in power. Each wrestler that had um, each promotion from each wrestler, they had to pay their wrestlers at in power. The problem was the promoter at NWA did not want to pay his wrestlers and didn't want to pay the indie wrestlers. And um, so what they did was they asked, you know, Tony Khan already paid Red Velvet. It was Red Velvet. Um, it was um, two other people that was booked from AW on Empower. But he paid his wrestlers already. And then they reached out to him and said, well, can you pay everybody? He paid everybody. Just for Mickey Jane to turn around and say, well, Tony Khan didn't contribute much to it. And that's what kind of pissed him off, like, I paid the wrestlers because that guy didn't want to pay those women and I paid those women and more. 
So that when NWA was out the window after that. And then Thunder Rosa. And yes, there you go. Thank you, Amir. Yeah, it was those three. He paid those three to go to Empower. And um, they asked him to pay everybody that was booked. And he wasn't supposed to do that, but he did it anyway. Just for Mickey Jane to turn around and say, oh, well, he didn't, you know, he didn't do this and this and this. And he was just like, actually, I paid and I actually did more than what y'all was trying to pay them. So you have stuff like that. And then Impact, we already know that was, you know, Scott was trying to win over trips and stuff like that with the whole when Kenny Omega was champion. And Kenny Omega did his job. You know, he had got them more viewership. Uh, people, you know, paid the pay-per-view and stuff like that. He got the ticket sales. And then afterwards, um, you know, they felt like y'all, you know, why can't some of our wrestlers be booked and stuff like that? And it was just a whole thing. So, so Impact and NWA is probably the only two that um, he doesn't kind of care for doing business. It may be different now because Scott is not at Impact anymore. Um, but as far as NWA, most likely not. Yes, Rocky Romero works for AW. I hope we get a... Um, it can't, it, it, I mean, it's possible, but the problem is promoters are selfish. Promoters are selfish and not a lot of people are trustworthy. And being that Tony Khan is a, a nice guy and he is a wrestling fan and sometimes, you know, he can be blindsided that, you know, some people are taking advantage of his niceness. So you have that. Okay, so not too much on that because I'm about to get on my main topic, okay? Um, I'm going to get on my main topic. This topic is about Jack Perry. Um, the title of the show, you know what I'm saying, is it's not happening to you, it's happening for you, okay? Um, now, before I get into it now, um, you know, he was booked Friday at a Windy City great match, too. If you didn't look at it, you need to look at um, Windy City. It, it was a great pay-per-view all the way around. And he did, uh, I've, uh, you know, Jack Perry's always been my number one um, pillar anyway. Oh, I forgot Dynasty. Oh, I forgot the Dynasty card. Put the Dynasty card up. Before I get into Jack Perry, though, I forgot about the Dynasty card, y'all. Um, Dynasty, so y'all know Dynasty is this Sunday. You have uh, the main event, which will be Samoa Joe versus Swerve Strickland. Um, you have Will Ospreay versus Brian Danielson. You have the Young Bucks versus FCR in a ladder match. You have uh, Okada versus Pac. Uh, you have for the women's uh, AW Women's Championship match, you have Tony Storm versus Thunder Rosa. Uh, um, for the AW International Championship, you have Roddy Strong. Um, versus y'all boy, y'all boy, your boy. He is back in the building, y'all. <laughs> uh, for the TBS Women's Champion, you have Julia Hart versus Willow Nightingale, and then you also have the six man tag. You have uh, Adam Copeland, Eric, Eddie Kingston, Mark Briscoe versus uh, House of Black. Um, we don't know what the pre the matches for the pre show will be, but of course, we'll probably hear about it on Wednesday or and they'll probably add like another match or, or whatever. Who knows, you know, but I feel like Dynasty will be a great um, match. Now they are um, doing Dynasty on Triller TV um, because of the, if y'all haven't heard the, you know, the Bleacher Report, something going on with them. So uh, Dynasty will be on Triller TV. Um, they will, of course, tweet out the links and stuff like that. It is still $49.99. You know, AW fans, we've been through this for almost five years now. We ain't, no, you know, we 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 just we we don't trip about that shit because we, we, you know. But pre-show is always on YouTube, the buy-ins, and then it will be on Triller TV. So make sure you follow Tr Triller TV and uh, just click the link. Um, do it from your computer. Watch it from your computer. Um, and of course, on my show, I'll do the Dynasty recap on my show. So that is the Dynasty card. Um, I will, and on YouTube. Yes, it is on YouTube. You can also purchase it on YouTube as well. Um, 
Yeah, so you have uh you have that. Now my um I I usually tweet out my um who I think will win and things like that. I don't usually do it on my show. I don't have um final pickings or nothing like that. I just I like to be surprised. I like to just go at it and just go in and, and see for myself. But it should be a great pay-per-view. Um I'm excited for it. It will be in St. Louis. Um, yeah, and we, we finally have two women match on a pay-per-view. That's, I'm happy to see that. I feel like Willow will be the new TBS champion. Uh, I feel like Tony Storm will retain. Fuck it, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Young Bucks, I feel like the Young Bucks will win the Tag Team Championship. I feel like Swerve will be the new AEW champion. Uh, will Ospreay will beat Brian Danielson. Okada will beat uh, Pac, he will retain. Roddy Strong will retain the AEW International Champion. And then um, I feel like because Adam Copeland, they will end up beating House of Black. House of Black will lose on Sunday. So that, there you go. You got it. You got my predictions. <laughs> Did a mini predictions for y'all, okay? All right. So back to the main topic of what I was saying. Uh, it's not happening to you. It is happening for you, okay? So, again, Friday, it was a uh, New Japan Windy City uh, pay-per-view. Um, Jack Perry was out there in Chicago. It was out there in Chicago. Um, now, AEW fans, I love AEW fans. They are very funny. They are so funny. And it's a song. It's a jack-off song. And I want y'all to hear it. Can you play it for me, please? Jack Perry, your bitch is too bad Your dick is too big Your aura is too powerful You do everything too well Your hair is too gorgeous I'm in love with you, big as a bro Hey, yo, that was great. Hey, yo, that was great. <laughs> Shout out to Chris from Unpurist. Um it's so funny because Chris from Unpurist um made the tweet. And um, I cannot think of the guy name, but he quote tweeted him this song from his tweet. And I thought that was the funniest. And I told him today, I said, I'm playing that song on my show. That is the funniest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> I'm in love with the biggest of bro. Like, that is so funny. <laughs> Y'all want to hear it one more time? <laughs> Play one more time. One more time. Jack Perry, your bitch is too bad. Your dick is too big. Your aura is too powerful. You do everything too well. Your hair is too gorgeous I'm in love with you, big as a bros I am a jack-off Jermaine said he uncomfortable <laughs> Yo, I was laughing too hard when I heard this on the Twitter But shout out to Chris, because he's the one who made the tweet <laughs> But yeah, so shout out to Jack Perry, y'all. Like, <laughs> the first line I can rock with, but the rest is just flat. <laughs> that song is so funny. I posted it on my Instagram too. It is too uncomfortable. <laughs> Yeah, AEW fans are funny. But shout out to Jack Perry. Now, if if you had if you did not watch the match on Friday, we witnessed somebody take something that was supposed to be so negative and it worked out in his favor. His merch sold out four times. He just restocked it today with a different shirt design. 
people and I got me one. People was buying, you know, people in my feed was saying they bought two, they bought three, like, but you know, the video, like I said on my Instagram live, was it embarrassing? Of course, yes, it was. Um, I didn't think it was necessary, but it worked out so much in Jack Perry's favor. He probably didn't think it would work out in his favor, and it worked out in Jack Perry's favor in a major way. Um, now, um, hopefully, I don't get flagged because I didn't post. You know, I you know don't have the whole thing because to avoid public enemies from getting flagged or whatever. But I just need y'all to see. Just, just, just watch. Play, play him, the other video of him coming out. For me. Just leaning in to this whole scapegoat persona, because truly, when it when it comes to this entire situation, like he's in Chicago, he comes out. You know, he comes out with the Chicago flag. And then, of course, he has his father's jacket. Um, and it has Crimea River. Now, I said the spirit of his father took over him. Like, this is who he was meant to be. Like, we, you know, like I saw, you saw Luke Perry. Like, you saw Luke Perry, like the whole entrance. You saw Luke Perry. It's like the Luke Perry attitude, just like Jungle Boy left. This Jack Perry, this version, this is this is him. This, like every that's why I was like, I felt like when I seen it, I was like, everything that happened was supposed to happen. Everything meant to happen for him. That's why this episode is called It's Not Happening to You, It's Happening for You. Sometimes some obstacles in our life, sometimes uh, difficulties and everything that we face happens for a reason. And I feel like that whole encounter with him and CM Punk, it happened for a reason. Um, and of course, it was, it's most likely probably a learning process on him because, again, Jack Perry is 26 years old and CM Punk is 45. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in my opinion, I feel like CM Punk could have handled that differently, um, being 45. But for some reason, during the retrograde, old folk have been very raunchy, very nasty, and very mean towards the youngins for no reason at all. And I know people are just like, yeah, CM Punk a real one. He a real one. The man is 45 years old. Jack Perry is 26. And when you look at the video, you can kind of tell that it caught, you know, I, I feel like Jack Perry did it. Of course, he did the, you know, real glass cry me a river. He did it for heel heat instead of, you know, and I feel like that's what he was telling him. Like, I was just trying to get some heel heat or whatever. I'm not trying to disrespect you, but you and in the collision before then, though, because, you know, when CM Punk was saying like how the younger generation don't be, you know, listening and stuff like that when he was aiming towards Jack Perry. So Jack Perry just, you know, turned around and did the same thing. Like you doing your, you doing your heat. Let me do my heat. But that's why I said, look, I have a conspiracy with all it is. I feel like FTR egged that shit on. Like I feel like they the messy ones in the room. They I feel like they the one who told CM Hook, hey, that young is talking shit about you and blase 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 because he walked up to him so angry. Like he took out, you know, he said he was already frustrated that um, he wasn't picked up on time and stuff like that. I feel like that was some underlying issues and he just took it out on Jack Perry. It was just an easier, it was just another aggravation um, that that happened and he just kind of took it out on Jack Perry. And kudos to Samoa Joe for grabbing Jack Perry when he did. He grabbed him and, um, you know, just to calm him down and stuff like that being a bigger person, being a leader, and just stepping in that situation. Because like I, I said, if Christian was right there, I guarantee you that wouldn't have happened how it did. Because everybody knows that, you know, Christian is Jack Perry's mentor. And I feel like if Christian was right there, that would not have happened like that. Because CM Punk knows who to play with. Because, you know what I'm saying? 
He that's that's my thing with CM Punk. He pick and chooses who to go at because baby, where was this energy with Adam Page? You wait till Adam Page wasn't in the building to say shit about him. People know who to play with. Uh, where was this energy to Eddie Kingston? People know who to play with, and CM Punk is one of those. He, he can pick on people that he feel like won't defend themselves. That don't make you a gangster. That don't make you hard. That don't make you the realest nigga in the room. Uh, I see through people like that. Because I don't like people like that. Okay? And people, oh, yeah, he real, real, real. No, you got real at all. This dude is 26 years old and you 45. But you ain't do all of that to Adam Page. You ain't do all of that to Eddie Kingston. But you want to do that to Jack Perry. And Adam, pa Adam Page said the worst about you to your face. You ain't do that to Moxley either. Moxley called you fragile. That's what I'm saying. People know who to play with. And he one of them. But nevertheless, Jack Perry benefit from all of it. Because you had content creators talking about some AW embarrassed Jack Perry. This is not going to benefit Jack Perry just for the next motherfucking day. Jack Perry sold out on his merch. And then on Friday, if you watch the match, even though it was divided, you had people in Chicago singing Crimea River. You had kids with signs of saying Jack, justice for Jack Perry. I stand with Jack Perry. People was cheering Jack Perry. You had some booze, of course. You had some people talking shit, but the, the love outweighed the hate out there in Chicago, in that man city. That's what I'm like. That man ain't Vaughn. That man ain't Dirk. That man is somebody that can't wrestle no more than 20 minutes without getting hurt. And stay hurt. Don't get me started. Do not get me started. But, um, yeah, so if anybody had a great weekend, it was definitely Jack Perry. Uh, they played that video. It was to benefit FTR. It was to make them care about FTR. Uh-uh. God said, no. Nah. This is for him. This young one right here. This is for this young one. And that's why I said the spirit of his father, Luke Perry, was all over him. Protecting him. Because everything worked in his favor. He gained fans. Um, merch sold out. The ticket sales increased after the video was released. It increased 30%. And when he came out, this was a different Jack Perry I have ever seen. He was confident. He fed into it. That's why I was just like, he became Luke Perry. Because, you know, that's his dad's leather jacket. He became his dad. In a, in a major way. And I know the spirit, I know his father will be so proud of how he handled it. He came out with the Chicago flag. He spit on the Chicago flag. He started walking to the ring. And you know what I'm saying? So this is the whole test. This is life right here. This is how life works sometimes. Sometimes things don't be happening to you. It happens for you. He's 26 and he faced the most humiliating thing that happened to him. He overcame it. Now he's ready to step into his element. And he's becoming, you can, you see what I saw he became an overnight superstar. He was already a pillar, but he became something different. Yes, the kill switch on Shibata was beautiful. Like he, he morphed into something great and the potential to be like the face of AEW soon to come. Because again, he is 26. He's not even 30 yet. It, yes, it, it was, 
Like when I seen him come out and the the like everybody used aura too loosely. But what I saw on Friday, that's aura right there. That's everything. Like Chris, like you saw everything that Christian taught him. You saw like Usually with Jungle Boy, he's always admitted that he has anxiety. He gets, you know, he gets shy. He gets frightened. And he just try to pretend that everybody's not there when he wrestles and, and when he talks and things like that. This Jack Perry? This Jack Perry was confident. This Jack Perry was, I'm here. This Jack Perry, he was prepared. This is what, so that had to happen. If that didn't happen, we wouldn't see this Jack Perry that we've been wanting to see for a long time. If you a day one Jack Perry Jungle Boy fan, because I've always been a Jungle Boy fan, like Jungle Boy has never missed in the pay-per-view, never. It was just always his character. It was just always like he needed promo work. It was just always, you know, he's a little timid. He's a little awkward. But now he has the complete package. He has the complete package now. And I'm so proud to be a jack off. Jacking. Shout out to the jack offs. We jacking off. We jacking. We are here. He 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 did what he was set out to do. And I loved it. So you know, of course, he lost the match because, um, you know, he'd been winning against him and stuff like that. And he lost and things like that. Now, I feel like, you know, the excursion, he's not done necessarily done. People have an instant gratification because he did so well on Friday. Now they want more of him. They want him back in AEW. But I don't think he's done in the excursion. Yes, we are called the Jackins. We're jacking off. Yes, we jacking off. Y'all do it all the time. Y'all familiar with it? Yeah. Okay. We jacking off. Yes. We jacking off the Jackins. But anywho, um, it's a lot of instant gratification because I feel like he's not done with his excursion run in Japan. Um, because again, Japan is trying to put, you know, get back, you know, put their footing back into their brand. So I feel like with Moxley being there and then Jack Perry's being there, it's going to help them a little bit because he is part of House of Torture. So I don't think they will just, you know, he will just exit like that. So in my opinion, it, I mean, if he does, then he does. But me personally, I feel like they're not done with him in Japan yet. Um, for him to be back at AWTV. But if he is, I feel like two of his, it'll be perfect for him to be back on. Um, one, All In. If it, it would make sense for him to come back by All In because All In is where everything begun. The whole, you know, the real glass Crimea River thing. <laughs> or you save him and he comes back in Chicago, which also makes sense. Okay. Um, now me, I had this fantasy book and, and I feel like I had a that's all Raven vision. It will make sense that the young bugs add him on to the elite. And I feel like it will be good for him. He will come back and he ends up attacking Adam Page. The story's already there. Like, it's like, Adam Page, all of this shit is your fault anyway. You see what I'm saying? Y'all get what I'm saying? Because they already suspended Adam Page from being an uh, EVP, right? So it makes sense. Like, we're adding him and make a whole rivalry between him and Adam Page. The ladies would love it. I already, I already see the AEW girlies fainting. Oh my God. If they book Jack Perry versus Adam Page at full gear, I would be so. Y'all have no idea. I will fall out. I'll probably pass out. Because probably... <laughs> if you know, I'm going, I'll be out there at full gear. I'll be out there in Jersey. So 
if they did an Adam Page and Jack Perry at full year, I will. We need Jack to walk into All Out in Chicago with the AW Real. Oh my God, that will be. But here the thing is though, I don't want him to. I, I don't want him to keep dwelling on the shit that happened with Punk. Just just let him come back out in Chicago. But he doesn't have to, you know, just still dwell on that shit because we want to move past it. And I feel like Jack Perry getting the reaction that he get, getting the ovation that he got, that ended that that raft with CM Punk. So that, you know, that no longer has to be correlated with each other anymore because now he's become his own person. He can still do the Cry Me a River gimmick because it, it works. The scapegoat, it works. But you don't have to hold on to... Um, the CM Punk stuff, that shit is over. Like, it, it did nothing for him. That, like, it did nothing because his merch sold. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he, he's a, he's over. He's a star now. So he doesn't even have to keep talking about that shit. He can still do the Crimea River. He can still have that gimmick or, and stuff like that. He can have the scapegoat. That works. But as far as, like, throwing shade at CM Punk or nothing like that, that, that can that can die. That can be dead. Like, that's that's done. We we done with that old man, okay? We done with that old, bitter man. Like, he the one who, he, he he's still mad that he, you know, bought him himself down and had to go back to a company that he hated, okay? And, you know, he gonna take that bitterness out on AW because just like, how dare you fire me and stuff like that. The only thing Tony did wrong was to spend Jack Perry for eight months. Jack Perry did not deserve to be suspended that long or suspended at all because he didn't do nothing to him. He didn't put his hands on him. He put his hands on him first. He pushed him in front of bro. So that's the only thing that I went against, you know, Tony Khan on. Like, if anything, Jack Perry shouldn't have been suspended. He didn't do anything wrong. So that's that's it. But as far as just like leaning on to the CM Punk stuff, he don't even have to do that no more. He ain't got to do that no more. He don't. He's the star of his own now. Because when he come back to AW, he's going to get a good ovation. The ovation is going to be there. Because we jacking off. We jacking off. Okay. But I feel like him starting off at AEW with a AEW um with a match against Adam Page will be the right move to do because Adam Page is the butterfly effect in all of this and it will be a a, a good callback for him like if it weren't for you none of this would have been happened none of this would have happened because the story is already right there they could do that like. Adam Page was part of the EVP. He's suspended. And then they add in Jack Perry as part of the elite. Because we know that's what it's going to initially go to. Um, they're adding Jack Perry to the elite. They've been mentioning him. Young Bucks, you know, they've been in the comments and stuff like that. So it's, it's right there. It makes so much sense. But, um, yeah. And, and if they do bring him back a little sooner than all out, all in or whatever. Okay, that's fine. But I just feel like people ha was panicking, like, no, they should bring him on now because if they bring him on, he's going to lose his momentum. No, he's not. No, he's not because if he was in the G1 tournament and stuff like that, no, he wouldn't because most AEW fans, they look at New Japan too. So he wasn't going to lose his hype or nothing like that because you still got Forbidden Door. Okay. And then after Forbidden Door, you have all, it's a month after, then you have All In. So they still have plenty of time, and the hype will still be there. Like, it, he wouldn't lose the hype. You know, some AEW fans, y'all panic a little bit too much. Y'all panic too much. But I get it because Tony Khan spoiled the fan base, giving the fan base what they want. But at the same time, y'all got to be a little bit patient because I don't think his excursion in New Japan is over with because he's still part of House of Torture. He got people buying House of Torture shirts in 2024, like out selling the Bullet Club. Like, come on. He's a star. He's the future. 
The other two pillars, they can fight over three and four, but the one and two is Darby Allen and Jack Perry. MJF and Sammy, y'all can fight over two and three. I mean, three and four, but one and two, it could be a debatable. Is that a Darby Allen and Jack Perry? Those two. And Jack Perry, he's he has morphed and to who he is meant to be. So everything that happened had to happen. Even though, oh, okay. Everything that happened was supposed to happen for Jack Perry. I hope Jack Perry saw, you know, I hope he, you know, saw the reaction, saw the love. I know he's still going to get some trolls in his, you know, his mentions. People going to still say what they want to say about him. But I hope he saw that he is loved. The love is more than the hate. We don't care about no CM Punk fans. Like I said, CM Punk fans, they take a bath uh, twice a week. Um, They don't have no bad bitches in their fan base. All of them look like thumbs and shit. Um, you know, the dude that was in the front row with that CM Punk shirt on, he had to be like 500 pounds. Um, and then he had a little sign. Like, um, All CM Punk fans, they have... Um, do they have girlfriends? I don't even think they have girlfriends. Um, let's see. Uh, CM Punk fans. CM Punk fans are the types to go to a party and be mad that um, music is being played at a party. CM Punk fans are the type of fans like they wear they wear um um them button downs as sweaters. Uh, CM Punk fans are the types to wear dirty shoes. They wear like dirty shoes and shit. CM Punk fans, they still wear those Echo jeans. Yeah, they still wear Echo jeans. Um, CM Punk fans again, they don't have no bad bitches. Like, there's no no bad bitches in their fan base. Uh, like the females that are CM Punk fans, like the tights are baggy because they ain't got no ass. Um, with them big ass glasses. Um, let's see. They breath stank. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, CM Punk fans like they talk like <clears throat> they breathe when they talk and shit. Running nose. They got booger in their nose. They be digging in their ass. Um, CM Punk fans scare the hoes. Um, they scare the bitches away. Uh, CM Punk fans, um, they're the type that um, they, um, you know how people, when the soap get thin and they still be trying to bathe with it, that's CM Punk fans. They run out of soap, they don't buy new soap, they just use it until it runs dry. Um, let's see. CM Punk fans, they don't know what Vaseline is. They don't know what lotion is. Uh, CM Punk fans, they... Um, they probably ain't never been on a date before. They probably don't know what that is. Yeah, they crying in shows like that. Look at him. He looks faint. Um, steampunk fans, um, they don't go to the barbershop. They don't get their hair cut. Um, steampunk fans, oh, I could go all day, y'all. I really could. I really could. Steampunk fans, they will go... They wear hoodies in the summer. Um, CM Punk fans, they just stink. Like, they just stink. Have you seen? They have no bad bitches. They stink. They mad all the time. They miserable. They go to the party and say, CM Punk fans was at Wale Mania just looking around with their hands in their pocket and shit. Um, CM Punk fans, they still drink Mountain Dew. Uh, CM Punk fans, um, Deep throat corny dogs and shit. Uh, CM Punk fans, they just ugly. Like, that's the ugly, that's the ugly, angry, no bitches, no bad bitches, nothing. They just, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, they just say, uh, they like you see them and you just every time they walk in with his shirt on, you like, uh, what is that? And then they men got bigger titties than all of us, like. 
thin pump fans, the males, their titties are so big. Like, they got some big old titties. Like, they got to wear a bra type shit. That's thin pump fan. Y'all might as well got a thin pump bra, a bra line for the men. Yeah. Like, every girl, like, it was the girl that was in my mention and she was a thin pump fan. I'm like, see, he ain't no bad bitches. Because look at you. You look like a librarian. You look like... <laughs> girl like get out of my mansion with your look at that it's, that's what they look like like they just uh if you a CM Punk fan I feel bad for you because don't nobody like you like nobody likes y'all at all and then they mad at us because now they got to be WWE fans and they hate it. Like, nobody told y'all, nobody told you to stand um, an old ass dude that can't control his emotions. He need a drink. That's his problem. He needs some weed or something. I ain't never like that. He, why he always so fucking angry? I don't know. Your wife is AJ Lee and you always miserable. I don't understand it. I don't get it. I can roast, I can roast seeing punk fans all day if I wanted to. That's crazy. <laughs> I just have to say that. Like, they just so miserable. Like, they always mad. They always miserable. They always angry. Like, why is you so angry? I want to ask him that. Why is you so fucking angry? Like, what is wrong with you? Did you not give a hug or something? Nobody hugged you when you was a kid? What is it? That man always mad. But his fan base always mad. Something wrong with them, too. They be scratching their balls and shit. But that's the punk fans for y'all. But anywho, to the Jackins, uh, we are here. And I am president of the Jack Perry fan base. Um, whoever your president of the CM Punk fans, I mean, they ain't seeing me on my bad day. So whoever you is, you know, most of them have, it, it's this one dude that's a CM Punk fan. He, let me not, let me not, let me not. Y'all almost with the hell for what I was almost about to say. <laughs> but anywho. So Jack Perry, I just want to say he had a great match on Friday. It was great to see him morph into something uh, better. It was, uh, I was great. I was proud that it worked out in his favor. It, um, you know, he didn't go out like a Sammy or somebody like that. He went out there. He understood. He knew probably they're going to boo me. They're going to try to hurt me or whatever. And, he soaked it all in the all the negativity. When he when he did the wink, he looked just like his daddy. When he winked at the camera, I was like, "Oh my god, that is Luke Perry. That is Luke Perry. Never change, Jack Perry. Welcome to Super Stardom. We we can't, you know, we we are ready to see you on the AEW screen, but we'll continue to." Ugh, I can't even talk. We we will continue to support you on uh, New Japan in the excursion. If you continue the excursion, or if you coming back in AEW, we're going to support you. We're going to root for you, and I can't wait to see what they have in store. But I really feel like they're going to start start it off for him against Adam Page. It makes more sense. Somebody told me Ricky Stars, and I was just like, that doesn't make a lick of sense. But Adam Page would make more sense. Like, you could be a scapegoat and you could start blaming Adam Page for everything out of nowhere. Just, you know, to the A. Now, that's AEW girlies. Y'all gonna have to pray for us when that happens because Adam Page is our daddy, okay? And then you have Jack Perry, nice looking too, just like his daddy. Two attractive guys, one on one. Yes, Lord. See, you can't say that about now. I ain't gonna say CM Punk ugly because he's not. He's not ugly. He's just an angry man. Like you too fine to be that angry all the motherfucking time. 
Like you don't have to be like all the all the women want to take pictures with you in the locker room. Ain't no need to be angry. They always want to them them bad bees at NXT. Always want to take a picture with him, and he's still mad and he's still angry. Like. All them just want to take pictures. All them bad bees want to take a picture with you. You 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 used to cheat. So I'm I'm just saying like there is no reason for you to be mad all the time. None. Okay. So, but shout out to all the Jack Perry the jackets. Can you play that song one more time for me? <laughs> Jack Perry, your bitch is too bad. Your dick is too big Your aura is too powerful You do everything too well Your hair is too gorgeous I'm in love with you, biggest of bros I am a jack-off We gonna play that every time he show up, okay? I'm gonna I'm gonna play it on I'm gonna play that video on Twitter every single time, every single time. That's a hit. That is a hit. Jack Perry, your bitch is too bad. <laughs> yeah, he got in a J. Like he won. He 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 won already. He won. He won in life. He has a, he has he wake up to energy. Okay, so he won. He won. He solidified. He 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 good. What I say on Twitter? Look at Anna J. Now look at the woman that you waking up next to. Exactly. Big side. We get, yeah, yeah. That's through all the haters, though. Not not all the jackets. I'm not talking to the jackets. I'm not talking to the Jack Perry fans. I'm talking to the Jack Perry haters. So all the Jack Perry haters, look at your woman. Look at Anna J. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Reality, right? Yeah. Some of y'all, y'all go home to some hunters. Some of y'all, y'all go home to some, you know, refrigerators. Some of y'all, y'all go home to rubber steel skin. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying, but they ain't Anna J. Okay? That's all I got to say. But um, that's it for my show today, y'all. I had a quick show today. I didn't have too much. Um, it was just a lot going on um, this week. So I was just like, I just want to highlight a few things. But I am will be back next Monday for the Dynasty recap. Uh, I will recap Dynasty. I might have a guest to recap Dynasty with. I'll see. Most likely it'll be Lyric. Um, because I did tell her uh, to come on the show for the recap for Dynasty. So it'll most likely be my sister um, will be on the show with me next week. But yeah, other than that, I just wanted to, I wanted this show to uplift Jack Perry because it wasn't too many content creators talking about how um, this, the, the whole embarrassment, it benefit Jack Perry. So if you listen to Jack Perry, just know that you are loved. People, you know, you're out loved. And I hope that you saw that you're loved. Um, you know, you saw with the merch selling, people are buying the merches now. I've been checking to make sure there's still a lot of merch available. He did a release um three extra shirts in the and he did restock the scapegoat shirt. And of course, it's the wristband and the hats. So buy the merches. Um, great design. Um, he got a designer, uh, a smaller account, ended up making his design. So, you know, never lose hope. You never know who's looking at your work and things like that. You never know. You might get that DM. Hey, can you make this for me and stuff like that? And the the smaller account that made the design for the scapegoat for him did a wonderful job and I did purchase mine. Um, so shout out to all the jackets. We are jacking off. So Make sure you tune in to Dynasty. Um, Dynamite is this Wednesday. It's a great card for uh, Dynamite. We'll see Collisions card, of course, when uh, Wednesday come around. And then, of course, on Sunday, it is Dynasty. But make sure you tune in to Rampage. Uh, make sure you tune in to ROH if you keep up with ROH as well. 
And uh, yeah, so that is it for my show today. Y'all have a good night. Y'all be safe. And you hear my getaway music. First of all, there's no such thing as white collar crime. And there's definitely no such thing as black on black crime. Crime is crime. Let me explain something to you. I don't care if you have a white collar or a tank top. If you rob me, I'm going to whoop your ass.